Roller Derby is one of the region's best kept sporting secrets. The ladies return May 28th with two games at the Hague Bowl in St. Catharines. The show will pay tribute as well to a legendary local derby participant. We have two members of the Niagara City Rollers with us, Morag Townsend and Rachel Outram. She's better known as Blunt Force Tanya. Rachel, that name, I've, I've got to ask. How do you get a name like Blunt Force Tanya? Uh, in high school, I played roll, or I played rugby, and then I also was a figure skater as a child. So they kind of there's an ongoing joke that uh, roller derby is where figure skaters go to die and end their careers. Um, so Blunt Force Tanya is a nod to Tanya Harding and the Nancy Kerrigan situation. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've got to dig into that. Yeah. So figure skating to roller derby—that's yeah. a huge difference. That's a huge leap. Uh, it is and it isn't at the same time because I mean the skating the skating concept is similar, uh, different mechanics. Um, but I find that my figure skating background uh, has helped me immensely with roller derby, and same a lot of ho hockey players somehow find themselves in roller derby for the same reason, same idea. Only they're used to the checking, and for me, the hardest part was in roller derby. You constantly have to be uh, low, like a low center of gravity, so that you can take hits and and give them and not fall over. Um, and as a figure skater, you always want to be up, to, like tight and poised. So that was a hard that was a hard learning curve for me. But but yeah, that's where it comes from. More like. I grew up here in the Niagara region yeah. and I watched Channel 29 before it was Fox, WUTV, Skinny Minnie Miller was on <laughs> every weekend and I watched roller derby. It's fascinating. It's a fascinating sport. How did you get into it? Uh, so when I was uh, living in Northern Ontario, I, uh, I'm a dietitian. that's my day job, and uh, I was looking for a way to be um, visible and active in the community, uh, and uh, you know, I wasn't really a sporty person growing up, um, but I did, um, I did want to join uh, a sport. Uh, some friends I knew were starting a roller derby league in the area, and um, I thought this is a team sport, it's the fastest growing women's sport uh, in the world at the time um, and I knew we were all starting from scratch uh, so hardly anyone uh, had any roller derby experience so we were all learning together uh, which was really important to me so it was a way to be active in the community and for people to see that I was an active person physically active uh, but also a way uh, to sort of um, learn in a supportive community as well. Morag, there are participants as young as eight years old here in Niagara. How many in total participate in roller derby? And is there a house league that feeds into the Garden City Rollers? We have uh, 25 active adult skaters at the moment. Um, we have had as many as 100 in, in, our, um, in our skating period. With COVID and various things, our, our, our sort of um, usership has gone up and down. Uh, we're sort of going through a bit of a resurgence now. Um, how do you get involved? Uh, so typically we do uh, learn to skate um, sessions uh, a few times a year. Um, basically, if you're interested in uh, learning to skate and potentially learning to play roller derby, you would uh, get in touch with us via our social media or email us at info at niagararollerderby.com. Uh, we will be having a new skater intake, so one of these new skater learn to skate sessions, um, likely in the fall. So keep an eye on our social media and our website and, uh, and email us if you want to ask us some questions. The May 28th event, Rachel, in honor of Don Chrysler. What can you tell me about Don? Um, I've only been with our league for three or four years now, so um, my experience with Don is, is less than more eggs. Um, but my first impression of Don was watching her play derby in jeans like which to me was wild because like I, I can't imagine not wearing short shorts or having you know the the freedom to move but yeah she played in, in jeans and she was just so cool or or watching her lay the for roller derby we have um, a rope that's taped to the edge of the track so that um, as skaters we can feel on our wheels when we roll out of the tracks right. for, for penalties and whatnot um, and so we have to lay that rope before each game and she would go around on with her tummy on a skateboard, pulling herself along, taping the rope down. Just it was the funniest thing to watch. But she was just, uh, yeah, she was an amazing person. Just so kind and just loved everyone and so willing to help. More like she was a bit of a renaissance woman as well, a playwright, a musician. Yeah. She, she built sets. 
Definitely. Taught at Brock? Absolutely, yeah. So she was uh, involved in the theater community uh, in, in the area. She was part of um, Suitcase and Point Theater uh, and, and various other groups. Um, and, and of course, as you say, she taught at Brock. Uh, she, she was involved in, um, in uh, the Shaw Festival as well from time to time and also in, uh, in uh, TV and, and movie production throughout the, the sort of uh, Golden Horseshoe area. And she brought that, uh, that sort of um, experience to roller derby. In the that, dramatic flair. In that she was, she was a free spirit and, and sort of did things effortlessly on the track and, and brought dramatic flair. Um, but also had that sort of technical theater background, so she was um, able to lay down our track um, quickly uh, and efficiently uh, and did a lot of behind the scenes work as well. So she was a super important part of our league and we really miss her. Yeah. Rachel, retiring her number on May 28th. Yes. There's two games on May 28th, so your team is playing. Can, yeah. can you so explain? The first game, generally when we host double headers, we feature our first game with our junior skaters, which like we said, range anywhere from eight to Seven, eight to 18, 18 they age up into adults. Um, also notable that we don't, uh, the juniors don't do heavy contact. It's more like, you know, regular light bumps, not deliberate pushes. Um, <clears throat> so that whistle is at six and then the adult whistle. Likely around 8, 8 p.m. Um, our games have two uh, 30 minute halves. So, but there are timeouts and, and various, uh, various things that can sort of push the, the time a little bit, but the adult game is likely to start around eight o'clock. Is there a league and are there other, te like so, other teams are coming down to yeah, play? So our juniors are playing the Tri-City uh, junior team, which Tri-City is uh, Kitchener-Waterloo. Um, and then our adult team, the Garden City Rollers, are playing Bruce County Roller Derby. Um, and it's kind of, uh, roller derby has been on hold for a couple of years. A lot of leagues have either lost their practice spaces due to business issues um, or uh, having people come out or just different lockdown rules for different areas of the province. Um, so this as a comeback game, is it's kind of big. Like we expect a, quite a turnout from other roller derby players and uh, supporters from other cities and whatnot just because we're very fortunate to have the facility that we do that we didn't we, we didn't lose we didn't it shut down and we for didn't have to shut down yeah yeah we've probably been one of one, one of, of the, the very leagues. few leagues still practicing throughout covid well it sounds like an exciting night saturday may 28th ten dollars for adults yeah 12 and under people 12 and under get free. in for yeah. free mm -hmm. you've got some halftime entertainment 50 yeah. 50 draw two games Let's all get out there and see some roller derby. Thanks for joining us today. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks.